As we dive into 2024, we continue our quest on highlighting great service companies in the oil and gas industry. And today we bring on another woman entrepreneur that's kicking butt and taking names in the oil and gas industry. We talk to her next on this episode of The Crude Truth. In 1901 at Spindletop Hill near Beaumont, the future of Texas changed dramatically as like a fountain of fortune, thousands of barrels of oil burst from the earth towards the sky. Soon Detroit would be cranking out Model Ts by the millions and America was on the move thanks to the black gold being produced in Texas. Now, more than a century later, the vehicles are different, but nothing else has truly changed. Sure, there may be many other alternative energy sources like wind and solar and electric. But let's be honest, America depends on oil and entrepreneurs. And if the USA is truly going to be independent, it has to know the crude truth. NAEP is a proud sponsor of the crude truth. Be sure to register for the NAEP Expo 2024 February 7th through the 9th at the George R. Brown Convention Center in Houston, Texas. Hurry and register today. Nate, where deals happen. This episode is brought to you by LFS Chemistry, committed to being good stewards of the environment and providing the tools so you can be too. Nape Expo, where deals happen. Air Compressor Solutions. When everything is on the line, Air Compressor Solutions is the dependable choice to keep commercial business powered up. Sandstone Group. Exec Crew. Elevate your network. Elevate your knowledge. Oil and Gas Workers Association. Pecos Country Operating. Fueling our future. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever, whatever the time of the day it is. I cannot thank you as always for tuning in watching, listening to another episode of The Crude Truth. As we continue to barrel on into an epic 2024, I'm just so excited today to bring on a guest that has been blazing a trail down there in the Beaumont Golden Triangle area, but also reaching out across the nation as far as the industry goes, and actually a woman entrepreneur that is doing great things on the industrial side, and also knows the ins and outs of the certifications that it takes to be a woman entrepreneur here in the United States of America. My guest today is the one hailing from the Golden Triangle, Savannah Rose with Midstream Mats and Rentals. Savannah, how are you? I'm doing so well. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. I cannot complain. Trying to just stay warm here in these winter months of, of Texas. It gets a little chilly this time of year. Fantastic. It is It is definitely chilly right now. <laughs> well, Savannah, thank you so much for coming on. Um, you know, as, as I had shared with you in our pre-meeting and, and, and when I reached out saying, hey, Savannah, I'd love to have you come on. I enjoy having, you know, female entrepreneurs on the show, especially in the oil and gas industry, because you ladies, you know, you're, as I would, I would say, you know, y'all are rough and tough and, and hard to blush. And, uh, you know, you guys are just blazing a trail. But then once I really begin to learn more about you and as we talked, you know, you also shared about all the great certifications that you have, but also how you share that knowledge with others to really kind of, you know, you know, hear I'm woman, hear me roar, roar and share that with others. So, you know, for all my listeners out there and all my viewers, you know, uh, you know, where can they find you as we start this off and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. So, um, I am, I'll start from the beginning. Yeah. I am initially, initially from Baton Rouge. Um, and I had moved to Beaumont about three to four years ago. Okay. Um, I came onto the industrial scene and I, I, and I had been in, uh, oil field sales for a little bit, um, doing burns and things like that. Mm. Uh, the spill containment. So when mm. I had, when I had moved over here, um, I started working in a rental equipment, um, a, a re rental equipment <laughs> rental place yeah. and so we were doing we were doing access matting and I thought you know people complain about this access matting all the time it seems like something they do not want to mess with it you know some of the products because we were a distributor not a manufacturer yeah. uh some of the products were subpar um they seem to be discontent with the fact that the equipment breaks all the time so, I mean, it's wood, it's, it's going to break eventually. Um, so with that said, when I left 
that business, I decided to give it a, a shot from a distributor standpoint. And that's how my first business, Midstream Mats and Rentals, came about. Um, officially opened in 2021. And um, I am, I have all the woman owned certifications from federal, state, um, as well as there's a national one, WBE, um, which, which was given by the WBENC. So it's woman business enterprise. Um, and so that's the one that the refineries would look at. Um, wh while Texas itself does have a hub, which is historically underutilized. So I am also a, a historically underutilized business. So, um, and they all have separate compliance audits. Wow. Holy cow. That's a lot in that. So, so you guys, uh, you're a distributor and a manufacturer then of, of products that you rent and sell. Is that correct? Yes. We just started manufacturing about six months ago. Um, so we, we are now, we, we don't run a full sawmill, but we do build our mats. Okay. Okay. Very cool. You know, uh, with you being, uh, you know, 2021, that's technically not that long ago. And, and sometimes yeah. I, I'm looking at things already at 2025 and here we are barely in 2024. Uh, right. You know, let's, you know, uh, I want to kind of dive into your women, women certificates. Cause I don't think a lot of people know about those or how to properly get them. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, they're not utilized as much, are they? No, they're not utilized. And I think that there's a lot of misinformation out there about, um, you know, about the difficulty of, of getting these certifications because they do the, it is difficult to understand when you're first going through the material that you have to provide. You're talking about all your financials, things from the the way beginning when you first began your business, you know, your operating agreements, things like that. It's, it's gathering a ton of information and it's very, very intimidating. And not to mention, depending on what, um, which way you're going, whether you're going federal, state, or you're doing the woman business enterprise, that also dictates, you know, who you're dealing with, because you'll be assigned somebody to kind of Hold up your file. Hold up your files. You'll need to provide sometimes additional information if there's things that you don't have. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very intimidating process. I believe for uh, the SBA, I think I waited six months to get certified. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, That's but it is well. It is well worth the wait. There is a five percent set aside for. Uh, well, that's the goal. Five percent set aside for uh, woman-owned small businesses. And that, so that's federal. And uh, so I am a certified woman owned small business. And, you know, they they'll give you a big list of all the information that must be provided, but they really don't tell you, OK, so if I don't have this, what can I do? You know, that's a, that's the learning curve. And that's why there's all these companies out there who uh, will take your money to, to do the process for you. At an yeah. exorbitant cost, but, but really, mm -hmm. well, you know, what made you want to go and get, cause you see women owned businesses all the time. And I'm thinking of a few different ones right now. And it's like, there's a lot of extra work that goes into this. And you said it's well worth it. What was something about all these certificates that was like, I'm sure you were like, oh my God, it's getting like, is this ever going to end? You get maybe, maybe not. You were getting frustrated, but what was it that that you know light on the other side that really made this like, wow, so worth it? What is it about it? Well, I think that when you're woman owned certified, that you you're telling your customer, look, I run this business. This is my company. I'm not. I have not been put in this position by anybody else. Uh, you know, and especially in this case, this business, I've started from the ground up. Uh, I wasn't given anything by my family members or, or, or whatnot, you know, so I let them know that, you know, this isn't my father, my uncle's business. This is my business. This is what I do and my livelihood. So I find that they take, they take it much more serious, especially because I have all three certifications. So that's three separate audits. Now, some of those are in person. They want, they want to know that 
uh, you, you were writing checks that you were, you know, you're in charge of the, um, the billing that, you know, they want to, they want to make sure that that is that you are in fact a woman in the highest position at the company. Okay. All right. And then, um, do you by chance, so you mentioned that the SBA, uh, uh knocks all, or, or tries to save 5% for women owned business. Do mm -hmm. you know what that's 5% of, of the amount or anything like that? Um, I'm not sure. I have some paperwork. Uh, I'm not sure when it's for the five percent of the federal contracting dollars that they're. Wow. But um, so and, and that's another thing too because you have to look out federally, like where the job is going to be if it's doable for you. Luckily in Texas, there's more than enough work to be done here. Yes. So. Well, now, uh, to be a certified women's owned business, I guess you got to, what, own 51% of the business or? Yes, but um, you have to own 51% of the business and you have to hold the uh, the highest position. So, uh -huh. you know, president, CEO, whatever. Um, and you also not only hold the highest position, but you have to be the final say. Okay. So, okay. You, you know, if there's a, a board, you're going to have to be the the primary decision maker. Okay. Wow. Okay, very nice. Well, let's uh let's dive back just a little bit here. So, you know, 3 4 years ago, you decided to break out on your own. You're like the, the quality of these uh, uh the mats that I'm I'm selling are mm -hmm. not well. Let me go and be a distributor of these um what was it that made you want to make that jump? Was it just the quality of the mats or, I mean, come on, you're an entrepreneur and that's what I love to have on my show. So let's, let's dive into the entrepreneur that is Savannah. Okay. So I started hanging out with other entrepreneurs when I came here because that's what that's, I feel everyone in the golden triangle that, that I've met is that I've become friends with, um, they're all in oil and gas. This is a predominantly oil and gas area. Most, mm. most everyone I know works at a refinery or, or something of the sort. And so, um, you know, I think there was kind of, there was so much support when I was discussing like, you know, how, what I wanted to do at work when I was just managing. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I could do this better. I wonder how difficult it would be to get the financing and all of this other stuff in place. And it turns out it is difficult, but it is not impossible. So, and that is what I really would like people to know is it's, it's not that it's hard. It's just that you've never done it before. So, you, you know, you have to learn. And once you learn, it, it comes naturally. Well, what I find interesting is that here you you were talking about like, hey, when I got here from that other state, and, and we'll, we'll we'll give Louisiana a shout out there, and uh, I think you said uh, I think you said something in the pre meeting about LSU or something like that, and uh, mm -hmm. so so good for you, and um, <laughs> but uh, but no, um, you said you hung out around entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong. I have my, my friends that like, I'm, I'm I just uh, celebrated my 40th, 40th birthday mm -hmm. and, and I had my closest friends that have been around since grade school. And, and those people that have been with me through my ups and downs. And that's, a, that's a circle. However, mm -hmm. the circle that I hang out with on a daily basis is not them. It is a group right. of other successful individuals and I do believe that you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. Absolutely agree. And so that that's something that I do want to kind of say that, hey, I agree with you on that's like once you get in a certain circle, you know, um, you know, you can even go with a cheesy um, saying that it's like, you know, don't tell your dreams to people that can't understand that, that, that thing. Right. You know, you want to be able to be with a group that's like, hey, you can do that. So you got this idea, you now have the support group and now, you know, boom, midstreams, mats and rentals is a thing. You know, what's, what was one of the first things that you learned being an entrepreneur that was like, oh, okay, this isn't like it's written in the book or anything like that. Um, taxes for one. Okay. Um, yes. Ta wow. Okay. So that was slightly devastating, but okay. But um, I would say aside from that, because nobody likes to pay taxes, uh, I would say probably getting initially the hardest thing 
was getting people to take me seriously because in the very beginning when I had just started the business, their first question is, well, how long have you been established? Well, this year, you know, so that's not too reassuring for a lot of people. Um, luckily, I was doing a lot of networking meetings and uh, leading some oil field related stuff. And I had people come to my meetings and just one time this one customer took a chance on me and I, I believe it was my, it was my first month open and he spent $300,000 with me, I believe. Okay. So uh -huh. he said he really and truly, I've, I've always remembered that because he gave me an opportunity when I guess I didn't necessarily, you, you know, he didn't have to, there, there were other vendors that he could have used, but he gave me an opportunity and it worked out very well. Well, you know, let's talk about your company for a minute. You know, what is it that you're selling? You know, it's called Matson Rentals. Uh, your website is, uh, can you say it for everybody out there that's listening and watching? Yeah, it's um, www.midstreammats.com. Um, so basically what we do is we manufacture uh, access roads. That's going to be the three-ply laminated. Um, ours are solid oak mats um they're seven inch thick we are we we are building these on the yard so i try to make sure all of our customers have new mats especially for lengthy jobs i want everybody to have new equipment um and you know um as as a woman i feel like i am highly detailed and i crack that whip about you, you know i want it, it represents me i want it to be a fair representation so i don't want to send anything you know, cruddy out there to a customer. Right. Okay. And, um, you know, for, for, um, for everybody out there, you know, what kind of businesses you mentioned refineries earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you know, what I'm picturing is that if I've got a drilling uh, project and the mud is just too great or anything like that, I can call you up and, and I don't want to use the word, um, the forklift things, uh, but they kind of remind me of the bottom of the forklift, you know, uh, where you put, I don't know what they're called. Um, anyway, the things that you put stack on stuff and then the forklift goes into it and lifts them up. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, Like a pallet. Uh, what? It, like, reminds you of a pallet? Yeah, yeah. pallet. Yes, okay, the yeah. pallet. But they're way better than that. So, but I, okay. I, 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 I vision like, hey, man, I've got a drilling uh, project. I've got a pad site and I need you to come out and, and have your team lay out a bunch of those. Is that is that a fair statement? Yes, that is a fair statement. Now, not every every Mac company offers installation, um, but but we do. Uh, you have to have your own equipment, or you would have to rent equipment to the job site to to lay it. You you have to have guys, flaggers, that kind of thing, and and it all depends on the job to whether that um, it's going to be on the road. You yeah. know, that's a completely different situation. Like right for utilities, right off the side of the road. Uh -huh. um, and so, yeah, we, that's actually a big customer of mine would be the utility companies because for their line trucks, they need mats to, to access the area to repair the lines. Wow. Okay. Very cool. And, you know, what is it also like, cause you also have another company uh, and I don't know if you want to do, would you like to talk about that one? Sure. I can, I can talk about both of two, the both other ones as well. Okay. All right, um, Eric. Uh, well, so I'd like to talk about your other company, uh, which is Midstream Power and Electric. What are you guys doing over there? Okay, so Midstream Power and Electric, um, we had established this year. Um, we are a union line company out of um, twenty two eighty six. So we are going. We are, we're doing maintenance. Um, we do substation distribution. Um, yeah, storm, freezes, hurricanes disasters okay. um so that's that's where the direction that we're pretty much everything they're high voltage okay. specifically. yeah so, so you're uh you, you mentioned storm so basically with that company then if the power lines go down you are um getting out there to help put them back up and things like that or what are you right. doing with savannah okay right holy cow what made you want to dive into that this year so that is a whole different story that um, also when I moved here, uh, I'm married into a family of linemen. Okay. And uh, well, so 
my husband is not a lineman, but his brother's a lineman. But okay. he and he also he he's builds rental businesses. So he did kind of help me with with midstream mats. And yeah. it was his it was his idea to, you know, kind of push me. He's like, you can do this. Um, you know, you're you're good at it, you're good at sales, it'll work out. Well, so his brother and I had kind of discussed, you know, what if, because there's so much set aside out yeah. there. What if we utilized the already established company with the safety record and did a DBA for the uh, high voltage work? So I went down and joined the union and I have a picture, which is hilarious because I can, I know that they are all thinking, what are you doing right now? <laughs> but they were so welcoming and, and super cool. So I believe I might be the only woman owner out of that union hall holy cow well you know i do know that unions help build america there's no and this or buts about that um, right uh, you know what is it about being a part of a union that you find uh you know that's pretty interesting are there any uh stigmas that aren't true about being part of a union that you can share uh, so i would like to point out that the union does have a seven-step training process um okay. so you you, your journeyman linemen, you will, they will usually be out of school from two to two and a half years. Uh -huh. um, and so it is better training, but also, you know, with, I feel with better training, better wages, better um, benefits that you, you get a better worker. Also, yeah. there's, a, there's a standard that the union holds their, um, their people to. And, and plus, you know, the the companies around here that are using the union are looking for a skilled worker yes. and and so i just thought i was like you know what that sounds great i would love because i can't be on site every day i need people that i can trust oh yeah no having the right people i mean you know me and uh, you know we're a family-owned company mm -hmm. here at pecos and you know having the right people you know obviously uh, you know us we're a pretty good tight-knit family and, and we definitely trust each other mm -hmm. and at, at sometimes it's almost like if one of us isn't on the site uh it's like you know what's going on is everything right but once you've been able to hire and and train and work with people and build that trust you know you do have other people that can do the job and you know again i mentioned you know unions help build america my uh, my my grandfather was part of a union down in san antonio and oh, really? uh, uh my my dad always says that that's what put him through college you know put him through school was was the union and so right. you know, he always he always thanks the unions and i think he still donates to the unions cuz Again, you know, there's so many of them here in America and um, that Beaumont area is also, you know, you mentioned it about skilled labor. You know, I'll say this. I think we give the Golden Triangle a hard time every now and then. Uh, but but the quality of individuals and the workers that come out of there are are some of the best there is out there. You know, Beaumont, right. uh, you know, that whole area um, is, is just got so many great people that 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 work hard and do great uh, work. You know, I know uh, my father used to even do work down there at the shipyards many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you were talking about taxes. That's um, actually how we got our break in the oil and gas industry was writing accounting software for oil and gas companies. So um, so I guess, you know, I guess one thing we can say here is pay your taxes. Is that right, Savannah? Oh, 100 percent. And, uh, you know, I was talking to one of the sponsors of, of the show this morning, LFS Chemistry, Jim Holmes, and that, you know, kids are not taught anything about accounting or taxes or really real life stuff anymore in school. And it's just such a hard place to do things. So, you know, again, you know, learning how to do that stuff is very important, right? Right. And I and I definitely would like to to add that it is very important to have a bookkeeper, even if it's freelance, even if you just pay as you go, however you want to work that it's, it, you, you must have a bookkeeper and you must have an accountant. It, I, this is not something that I would pursue without utilizing those because there is a lot of money funneled in through oil and gas. Yes. Yeah. We, we can't complain. There is a lot in, in the industry and uh, it's yeah. a good place to be. 
<laughs> and Absolutely. you stole my next question from me. I was going to ask you, being an entrepreneur, what's one piece of advice you could give not only other female entrepreneurs, but even the men out there, you know, a piece of advice uh, being an entrepreneur, Savannah? Um, I would say... I think that, okay, so uh, so think this out appropriately. Okay. I would say that it's a lot of advice and uh, rolled up into one ball. And that is that have a good plan, but don't be afraid to veer off. Yeah. Because I am not, this is not 100% initially what I plan to do. We've had to make, we've had plan Bs along the way, yeah. you know, C's, the, you know. So I, I do think that you have to be resilient in that you have to, you cannot be afraid to hear no. If I, if I was affected every time that I heard the word no, um, I would never leave the house. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that sometimes being scared uh, prevents you from making a decision that could be life-changing and beneficial to you. It's, there are aspects that are difficult as in, the, like I said, the funding, um, the taxes, but if I can do it, trust me, anybody can do it. So. <laughs> well, I think that's part of the stigma is that, and this is, I'm not going to say conspiracy theorist or ideas, but that people really just want you to go work for somebody else and be a worker bee, and mm -hmm. that you can't do these things. And so I'm glad for you to at least say, Hey, you can do it too. You know, um, so I, I think that's one thing being an entrepreneur that I always tell people is, Hey, go out there and give it a shot, mm -hmm. try. And if you fail, that doesn't mean you're a failure. That means you just learned, you know, what does it Thomas Edison say? He goes, I learned a thousand ways not to make a light bulb or, or something like that. I mean, that's important to know too, on how not to make something. Uh, Absolutely. So I cannot thank you enough. Uh, Savannah, you know, as we roll into 2024, you know, we've already, uh, you know, hunting season's over and I see you've got a great spread there of a, of a zebra and you got some pictures in the back. How was hunting season this year for you? Hunting season this year was, uh, was my best hunting season by far. Okay. Uh, I did tag out in Duval County. So that's going to be South Texas, uh, yeah. uh, between Freer and Hebronville area. Yeah. Um, and so I, I got two bucks this year. They're both 10 points. Um, the third, the first one, I believe went 138. Holy um, God. And the second one, which is the biggest year I've killed yet. Um, it was, well, it was a 10 point with a, with the 11, a kicker, but it was broken off. Um, they had seen him on camera and just so happened, nobody had seen him in person. Yeah. And it, so I was actually hunting with my stepdaughter and we weren't, we were not hunting for me. We were hunting for her okay. and because I was on trophy duty. This is my first year hunting a trophy buck. Um, yeah. They had, they had moved me up on the roster because at that point there, they were aware that I'm not just going out to the stand and taking pictures <laughs> and hanging out that, you know, I do take this seriously. I do love hunting. Um, I grew up hunting with my dad. Yeah. Um, which was more squirrel related than whitetail. <laughs> but man, once you get on the whitetail, yeah. oh, there's nothing like it. So uh, my stepdaughter actually ended up shooting a um, 14 point. And yes, but well, it was, it was a 10 point, a mainframe 10 with three kickers. And then um, it had the fourth kicker broken off. But so that was new at the time. Yeah. But it was it was great because she got to shoot a deer. And then the very next day, so after the hunt, she shot her deer, nailed it. She's a per she's 13 perfect shot. Yeah. Uh, and then so we were like, you know what? Do you want to finish this hunt? And she's super cool. So she was like, yeah, let's finish the hunt so you can get one. Well, this big buck walks out. And that was the deer that um, I actually let pass that day. Because I couldn't get a super clear shot. Okay. And I also, I also was not at, at the distance 100% sure on the age. So okay. I could only imagine me shooting someone's three-year-old future trophy buck. You know, they would <laughs> freak. So, so um, I went, I, I took pictures to the best of my ability. And I went back and my brother-in-law was like, Oh no, that's a shooter. 
he's been on camera and you, you better get back to the blind and go, you know, go get him. So I don't normally do morning hunts, but the next morning, uh, I woke up and went to the stand and I did not leave till like nine 30 in the morning, nine ten 10, maybe. And at the, the last 10 minutes, this gear walked out, smoked him at 45 yards, probably. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and he scored 155. Beautiful deer, very exciting. So, well, so will that be in the office or is that going to be a house uh, uh, um, mount that you're going to do? So, I think I'm doing um, a pedestal mount, but a, like a double pedestal mount with both okay. deer. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that would be pretty amazing, right? Like yeah. with, a bit, with a bit of teak wood or something. Yeah, that would be pretty um, cool. That would be really, really cool. Well, Savannah, I cannot thank you enough for coming on The Crude Truth and, and really sharing with us about women-owned uh, businesses and how those certifications can truly help out individuals uh, in the long term and also sharing with us your entrepreneurial background and experience. You know, again, for our listeners and, and viewers out there, how can they find, you know, uh, Midstream Mats and Rentals and Midstream Power and Electric? Um, you can uh, go to my website. Um, right. uh, like I said, it was www.midstreammats.com. Uh, I'm also pretty active on LinkedIn, so you can reach me there or um, our Facebook page. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, there's always, um, you know, my personal number. If there is anything needed around yeah. this area, everybody has it. So, okay. uh, so, yeah. Oh, man. Well, Savannah, again, I cannot thank you so much for coming on. And uh, we'll see everybody here again on another episode of The Crude Truth. Thank you. Again, thank you to our sponsors, LFS Chemistry, NAPE Expo. Air Compressor Solutions, Exec Crew, Oil and Gas Workers Association, Pecos Country Operating. The easiest way to start your own podcast and TV show? Real News Communications Network. Stand out from your competition. Produce streams of high-quality social media content. Become a thought leader in your industry. With RNCN, you get to be the host. We handle everything else. Tour one of our three locations in Dallas, Fort Worth, and The Colony. Call 972-402-6333 or visit launchashow.com to find out more.